What's happening everyone? It's Rob from the Basement Bike Shop with that long anticipated video, how to install and remove three piece cranks without the crank arm setter remover tool. Now in this video, we're going to install and remove the three piece crank 48 spline. I'm also gonna get into eight spline a little bit just to explain it in case you don't know and how to remove and install a sprocket also. I'm also going to talk about the proper way to use a crank arm remover setter tool um, in case you do have one and you just don't know how to properly use it. So jumping right into it after we get the wheel off, I'm going to put on some knee pads with a hard outer shell and you'll see why in a minute. Also I propped up the seat on my brick um, like I normally do when I work on it without a bike stand. Then we're going to remove the crank arm bolt. Now the best way to do that is to have the Allen wrench almost lined up with the arm. If you put it opposite, you're just not going to get a good amount of leverage. Um, it's going to make it a lot more difficult. If you put it almost lined up, um, you'll be able to hold the arm with one hand and you should be able to get it out pretty easy. Then after you get the crank bolt out, you're going to want to find something to punch out the spindle. Um, I like to use a 3 8 socket extension with a socket that, but it can be anything that's just smaller than the splines on the crank arm, but bigger than the threads on the inside of the spindle. So it doesn't wreck either. Now, this wheelbarrow axle I found also works good. Now if this is a factory installed crank, it's going to take a little bit of effort to get it moving. But just be patient. Little taps, a lot of them, not a uh, bigger hammer. It's never the way to go. Now if you do have a crank arm remover tool, you're going to take the outer sleeve off it and then thread it all the way in to your spindle. And then just hit it with your hammer. Now you don't have to hold it so you can get a little more leverage on it. Now on a three piece crank, you can remove either side. It doesn't matter. On a two piece crank, a lot of times you're limited to just the left side, but a two piece crank 48 spline removes pretty much the same way. After you get the arm off, we're going to take off our spacers and cone spacers. Then with a block of wood and a hammer, I usually hit the spindle flush with my bearing. And then use some sort of dowel to punch it the rest of the way through. I cut a section of broomstick out and it fits really good inside this. 19 millimeter bearing after you remove the crank try to keep all of the spacers and cone spacers for the drive side in one pile separate than the non-drive side they'll make everything a lot easier um, in the long run so next we're going to take our sprocket bolt out of the arm to remove our sprocket and our sprocket adapter And then we'll get ready to install our new sprocket, which is a Shadow Cobra. Out of the package, it comes with two spindle adapters. The smallest one is for a 19 millimeter and for a 24 millimeter, you usually run no adapter. But the best way to know is just take your spindle and slide the adapters on. Whichever one fits tight is the one you use and the other one toss to the side. Now, if you're just doing a sprocket removal and installation, there's still one more thing you have to do. And that is compare the thickness of the sprocket and the adapter to the old one. If your new sprocket is thinner than your old one, then you're going to need a spacer to take up that amount of space to make it even again. And if it's thicker, then you want to add a spacer to the other side 
just to make it even so your crank arms are the same distance away from your frame on each side. Otherwise, if this is the first time you're installing this crank on this bike, the next thing we're going to do is the prefit. Now the prefit is just to see how many spacers we're going to need to get the crank arm sprocket and sprocket bolt as close to the frame as we can without hitting to make it simple. After we get our spindle in, put on our drive side cone spacer. Again, it's the shorter of the two cone spacers. And then take our sprocket and adapter and see how close it comes when pushed flush to the cone spacer. If it's hitting, then start adding spacers and going back. Um, we're going to check our sprocket bolt. Make sure that doesn't hit. And then lastly, our crank arm. Push tight to the sprocket. Now it's going to shove the spindle out the other side, but that's fine as long as you get enough arm on that spindle that it sits straight with where it's, you know, going to eventually be. Then we check, make sure that the arm doesn't hit. Sprocket doesn't hit. Bolt doesn't hit. And then we're good to go. We didn't need a lot on that one. So I'm going to show you a two piece install I did um, on a Mafia frame. Now Mafia frame, I think it just has a really thin bottom bracket housing and that's why I needed so many spacers. But on this install, you can see that I had to stop well short so that the sprocket didn't hit the frame and then from there I just held spacers in the gap to see how many spacers it would take to take up that gap and then once you have that figured out you remove the crank again and then next we're gonna figure out the spacers for the non-drive side now to put it simply, the distance between the bearing and the crank arm on the right side should be the same as the distance between the bearing and the crank arm on the left side. So your sprocket with adapter, drive side cone spacer, and any spacers you figured out you needed should be the same thickness as the non-drive side cone spacer and any spacers on that side. And then once you have that established, we can go ahead and install the crank. The next thing we're going to do is install our spindle again. Now some spindles have a right side and a left side. Um, most do not. I guess it doesn't really matter which way it goes in, but I try to put it in the same way every time. I try to keep the left side the left side and the right side the right side um, throughout the whole time I, I have the crank. After that, we'll put our drive side cone spacer on. Any spacers we established we needed. I'm going to throw one in there on both sides. Your adapter and your sprocket. Now I've tried bolting the sprocket loosely to the arm before I pounded the arm on. And I, I don't know, I, I think they're both just as clumsy either way. It's just going to be a, a little pounding, a little adjusting, a little pounding, a little adjusting until it's on. That's just how you got to do it, I think, and the best way I've found so far. But after you do get it tight, I put my sprocket bolt in. Now, if you take your sprocket bolt in and out a lot, um, and it wears that thread lock off of it. I put a little bit of Loctite on there. Uh, I use the blue stuff, never the red. The red is the stronger of the thread locks. 
And the next part is what everybody's wondering, how you get the spindle centered and the crank arms on without the tool. Well, I invented a tool called the Rob Brace. And I'll tell you how to make it. You're going to take a two by four, cut it to three to four feet long, however far away from your wall you're working, and write Rob Brace on it. Then I'm going to stack stuff up against the wall to get the rod brace the exact same height as the spindle. Add a 2x4 if you need it. And then once you get it the same height as the spindle, You're going to push the crank arm tight to it and then with a piece of wood and a hammer, push the spindle as far as you need to into the other arm. Then it's time for the non-drive side. Put a little grease on our spindle. Put our non-drive side cone spacer on. Any spacers we decided we need. And then line up the arm so it's parallel to the other arm. Now with a 48 spline, it's a little harder than obviously an 8 spline. But just look at it from different angles. Make sure you have it in the exact right spot. And then you can start tapping that on with your rod brace against the other side. Then after you get the arm on, if the spindle is to one side or the other, um, just putting the rod brace against one side and then using our punch to be able to punch the spindle exactly to the middle before you put your bolts in. Now, if you do have a crank arm remover setter tool, You're going to put the outer sleeve on and then thread it into your spindle. Now you want to make sure you grab at least a, a good, you know, inch of three quarters of an inch of threads so you don't strip out your spindle before you turn this in. And then just by tightening the bolt into the spindle, it'll pull the arm on. And you can also use it to pull the spindle to the center. On my bike here, I had to put spacers in between the sleeve and my crank arm tool because of how close the end of my spindle was to the outside of my crank arm. You don't want it all the way to the end ever though. You don't want your crank arm bolt to bottom out when you tighten it in there. Lastly, we'll put in our crank bolts. Now, just like the sprocket bolt, if it's something you take on and off a lot and you wear that thread lock off, I use a little Loctite on it. Um, and I use the blue, which is like a medium lighter Loctite. I used red once. And I had to sell that crank with that frame. Then after you get the crank bolts tight, we're going to tighten up our sprocket bolt that we just made slightly snug earlier. Carefully you don't crack your knuckles on the sprocket. I've done that before. Now if you have an 8 spline crank, you pretty much do everything the same. Um, put your spindle in, measure out your spacers, install the sprocket, everything like that. 
Um, where it differs is how the arm goes on. The one thing that I do different is I put a little motorcycle chain loop on my eight spline spindle. It stops it from doing any kind of creaking that might happen, um, especially if you have aluminum arms on a uh, chromoly spindle. A lot of times you get a little bit of crackling in there when you put a lot of pressure on it. And I found over the years that the motorcycle chain loop, you know, was the best thing to put on it. I put the arm on, snug it to the sprocket. Then put my spacers on the other side and my other arm. Now when you tighten your crank bolts down, you're going to want to tighten down the crank bolts that go into your spindle first. all the way to where you want them. And then after that, tighten your arm bolts. And when you loosen them, you loosen the arm bolts first in the side, and then you loosen the crank bolt that goes into your spindle to remove it. And then after you get that all done, don't forget to tighten up your sprocket bolt. And then I go through and give the crank bolts just one last snugging up. And then you're all done. Well, that concludes our video on the installation and removal of three-piece cranks and sprockets. My next video will be the removal and installation of bottom brackets without a bench vise or a cup press. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can comment below or you can send me a message. Thanks.